Welcome to another edition of the Sales and Marketing Power Hour with your host, Carol Morgan with Denim Marketing and Kimberly Mackey with New Home Solutions Consulting. All right. Well, I still have three, so they'll, they'll catch up with us. I, I see there's still people pouring still in here. And, in. Uh, has the chat fired up? Oh, the chat has fired up. So, Carol, are you monitoring our chat? I'm monitoring the chat. We'll see if anyone has anything fun to say to us. All right. Good, I good. see Phil Bain in the uh, in the lineup. Great to see that guy. He's always got something to say, so I bet we'll hear something. What's up, All right. Good. We've been called out. So let's <laughs> let's go. Let's fire it up. So I love that. Love it. And love these new names that I'm seeing on yeah. here too. So welcome to the sales and marketing power hour. Well, this is our first one of the year, the new year, which is crazy. Because I feel like January just whooshed by and now all of a sudden it's February. I don't know how that happened. In in some ways, January seemed like the longest month ever. Yeah. And in other ways, I went, wait, what? It's February 1st. How did that happen? Yeah. Like, it, it was kind of a it was both for me. It was just nuts. I was more and the I'm wait what? discombobulated <laughs> with Vegas happening or with the builder show happening at the end of February. It's like, I don't know. It just threw off my whole Q1. Like I just, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in uncharted territory, I guess. Wasn't that so, the name uh, well, of uncharted territory? That's how all the sales and marketing power hour got started back in the days of COVID. It did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, and here we are still at it. Who knew we'd still be standing. So, all right. Well, um, I came with this quote this morning. I'm giving myself credit for it because I was going <laughs> to, I was typing it in and with chat GPT these days, I found that you basically have to tell it everything you want it to, to, to regurgitate to you. So as I was writing it down and thinking about what I wanted to say, I was like, it's not too bad. I tweaked a few things and just said, forget it, chat. You're not, in, you're not involved. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with my full brain power today. So uh, so this is the quote that I came up with. Uh, a brand is not just a logo. It's the overall impression and experience you give to your audience and customers. Your brand expresses the value you provide. It's everyone's responsibility. And I underline everyone's responsibility to uphold and protect the brand's integrity as every interaction contributes to its perception. Love so that. I struggled with that last one because it's like, yeah, every, it, 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 all these little details matter, right? Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so that's my quote. I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. Well, I think See, it's my a good brain one. Works sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you guys haven't joined us yet at Sales and Marketing Power Hour on Facebook, this is where all the cool kids hang out. So chime in, join in, start a new thread. You know, we'd love to chat with you there. Come on over. We're challenging Taylor. He's going to start a new thread today. We're going to get it going. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have a very lively group there. Like, uh, people do chime in. All right, Ms. Morgan, you want to tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. Carol Morgan, founder and president of Denim Marketing. We are celebrating 25 years this year. So make sure you check out some of the fun stuff we're doing for our 25th anniversary. If you need content, we are your content shop. We specialize in strategic marketing and content for blogs, social media, public relations, awards, you know, bios. If you need it written, we will write it for you. Uh, we also do uh, Facebook and Instagram advertising and a lot of email marketing. Um, and today I am in Awards Central here in my office working on awards for a commercial real estate client. So awesome. Well, that'll keep you busy. Keep me very busy and probably out of trouble, Kimberly, which we know is hard to do. Uh, you'll find a way. I have faith in you. I know you'll find a way to get in trouble. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Kimberly Mackey. My company is New Home Solutions Consulting, and I am the company that people call to make sure that sales is the engine that drives the train rather than running it off the tracks. People hear me say that all the time, and they're like, what? What, what does that mean? So I go in and, and help to make sure that all of your processes and your procedures and your systems are all in place and lined up to support your sales goals so that you can have consistent and profitable sales that are predictable, uh, which is great for cash flow. We all love cash flow. So it's not just more sales. So I do training and I can help you out with that too. 
Uh, but the the bigger thing that I do is I actually go in, roll up my sleeves and work as an immersion consultant and help you with all your processes and systems. And uh, when I get to do that, the results, uh, the results typically speak for themselves. So, but again, I will help you out if you just want training and coaching and support with that as well. Uh, we'll get there. So that's how you can reach me. And then without further ado, Mr. Taylor Humphrey of the award winning like when I was reading your bio, Taylor, I'm like, is there an award that this guy has not won for being like sales manager extraordinaire? Yeah, well, you know, I kind of I don't want to get too boastful, but I will say my favorite part of winning the award that I won last year of, um, at Nationals was I didn't submit myself. My team submitted me and they just said, hey, we're, we're going to submit you. We're going to send your application to you. Go in your office and read it. And I got to be honest. I was I was balling like a like a little baby. So while it was awesome to win the award overall from a company standpoint, man, that just that just kind of solidified our group uh, immensely. So, anyways, but yeah, so Taylor Humphrey, director of sales and marketing for Paysetter Homes uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and uh, yeah, excited to get into this topic. Uh, kind of had the opportunity to to create a brand. Um, I've had an opportunity to go in and refine a brand. And then the first time I did it, we started out trying to create a brand and kind of stumbled it, stumbled our way into it. So uh, I'd say I've seen it kind of uh, get better, you know, put it in a put it in place a couple different times, but just a cool, cool topic to talk about. And one that I think applies to uh, any any company in home building or any brand overall, no matter what stage or size you're in. So excited to do that with you guys. So thanks for having me. Yeah, it's it's like the song. Who are you, right? Like a lot, so many, uh, so many builders that I talk Man. to aren't quite sure they can articulate that. <laughs> uh, before we jump into our topic, though, I do want to remind everybody: if you are going to the builder show, uh, let us know and reach out to us. Uh, if you go to buildershow.com, you can Google any of us by name or, or go into the search. Uh, by name, and it'll pull up all of our sessions. Uh, all of us are speaking at the builder show, so. Um, we hope to see you there. It's going to be, it's going to be the, I think they said the biggest show that they've had since 2009. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be enormous. So uh, I, I'm shoes. like, uh -huh. <laughs> I, if you see me, I, in the hallway, I will probably have on tennis shoes. <laughs> yep. Well, if you haven't been make a plan, I would encourage you to oh, do gosh, that. I'm yes. Thinking, I'm taking my sales team. I'm giving them like a bingo card. They don't have to go to everything. It's just, hey, here, let's plan out because it's so massive. Let's make sure we hit hit the things we want to hit. Because if you're a nerd about this business like I am, man, you want to see it all in three days is just not enough time. Never enough time. Yeah, divide and conquer. We always divide and conquer. And then, you know, even work with, you know, other friends in the industry to divide and conquer. Just like, you know, hey, if you're going to the session, you know, bring me three bullet points. What were your three takeaways? Yeah. So... Yeah. And if you miss one, they are always available on audio. If you're in the building knowledge sessions, I think mm -hmm. the jam sessions, the uh, the two story to all the new types that they have, any of the hour long sessions, I believe are all going to be on, uh, are going to be recorded. So maybe not on video, but the audio will be available. So if, and your ticket gives you a free pass to hear any of them. So if you miss one and you have to make a choice, you know, just make yeah. a note of it and uh, go back and, and hear the audio from the other one. Because, yeah, it's uh, you got them all stacked up on top of each other for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the app is fantastic. Plan your show on the app. I know you said use the bingo card. Use that app uh, <laughs> and you can just download that. It's IBS. Just if you just go into your. Go, yeah. Go search IBS. IBS and you'll find it. It'll be fine. And still, what an unfortunate acronym. I mean, I just really am like, can <laughs> we. Can we not do better? <laughs> My wife gives me a hard time every time I get something from them in the mail. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, we don't we don't need to go down that path. But you That's get hilarious. Yeah. Well, yeah. it can, you know, IBS can give you IBS. So it's, you know, there's <laughs> there you go. Sometimes can be the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right. Well, we're looking forward to seeing everybody there, but uh, we got a lot to cover today, and so let's jump in. And uh, Carol and and uh, and Taylor, let's let's talk about how you define your brand. Like, yeah, I think that's that's a good place to start, right? How do you how do you even define it? Yeah. So, if, if you don't mind, I want to hop, go back to something you were just saying, Kim. Is that uh, you know who are you? That mm -hmm. that doesn't just help for just your sales team. 
that goes all the way to your land. Like when you're just going out and trying to find land and buy land in it, especially in like the Dallas market, as new builders come in, that's the first thing we ask is who are you? And I can't tell you how many times I've sat across from somebody and to watch their face go like they like they don't know. They haven't defined who they are well enough right. to be able to quickly say that. You should have, you know, a quick like slogan or a quick elevator speech that you, that your land person, your owner, all the way through to the, you know, your sales team, everybody should quickly be able to say exactly who you are. And I've sat across from owners, owners that have told me, oh, well, we're like brand X. Well, hold on. So you just told me your brand is another brand. You got to do, we got to do better, right? If you're going to be, if you're going to succeed, because if you can't define it, it's going to go all the way down to the, to, uh, through your whole company as not being defined. And so then it becomes a transaction where it's either your product better speak for itself or the price better speak for itself. And then you don't really have a brand, right? Yeah. And it's, it's not the, the, I'm going to use the word that I don't normally use. Cause I believe we, we are in the home building business, right? Not the house building business, but it, it becomes down to the, the, the sticks and the bricks. And, and we think that the, the house somehow sells itself. And well, we all know that that is not the case. So what happens if you don't define your brand? Your customer will end up defining your brand. Right. Do we want to leave that up to to them? One, you're never, if you do that, are you going to end up with happy customers that are like, yes, let me go tell everybody about it. Because if you don't know and you spend your whole day in that brand, then they definitely don't. Right. Know. I had never so thought Carol, about it that way, but that is absolutely true. If you don't define it, they'll define it for you. And your brand ultimately is how they feel about you when they think about you. So when you think about, you know, well, you know, Target or Harley Davidson or Starbucks, you know, how does that make you feel? You know, what do you think their brand promises? Because that's, you know, no different than it is in the real estate industry or the home building industry. Right. And, I, and I'm not taking anything away from the, the overall product, right? Like I'm, I'm a big pusher and, and, and a believer in like Chick-fil-A. They spend right. a great amount of time on that chicken sandwich when you come in, right? And uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a gentleman, his name is Scott Wozniak, and he's fantastic at marketing, but he was marketing for Chick-fil-A. And so they get into, you know, the, the pickles. They want them to uh, date meaning touch and not mate meaning being overlapped. So there's a lot of precision in how wow. they, build, they build that product. And then when you think of, and you can kind of take this into our home building industry, that's chicken sandwich. When you go into one restaurant, does it taste the same as if you were to go into the restaurant down the street? Absolutely. So think about that with your overall brand. If I go by, you know, plan A in this community, am I getting that same house in, in the other one. And then same thing with your model experience. When you walk into your model, are you thinking about your brand from all five senses? How did like, there's a reason why my front doors, when you walk in the models are a heavier weight, you mm -hmm. know, it's because I want you to feel that solid construction from the second you open. There's a reason my models all smell the same. There's a if music. Hey, if you're in marketing right now and you're having this push, throw me under the bus. You should have music in your model home going. It's creating that, that environment. Think about any other retail environment that you go into, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a store, they have music playing. Why? Yep. They want it to be fun and engaging. And if it's dead silence, that's not engaging. It should look And it's the fun. right kind of music too. It's not right. just any music. <laughs> I it's was music just thinking that, moves that too. you at the right pace. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. And so I don't know. If, I don't know if Hartley's on this, uh, but I'll give him a. I'll give him a uh, Chris Hartley. I'll give him a, uh, a pointer. Not a pointer. Excuse me. A uh, a compliment. Some credit. Uh, uh, we don't have to give Chris Hartley credit. Do we? <laughs> well, I don't I, think I'm he's definitely. here. He'll never know. He'll <laughs> never know. Yeah, he'll I know. <laughs> I can't make this up. I went into a model home and a model had music going. That is not a Cahobanian home. And if you've heard their 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 um, uh, commercial on the radio, it's Cahobanian, Cahobanian. I'm in Builder X and I'm listening to that that music. Oh my gosh! Wow. First of all, 
props on on their marketing department for having that right and second yes you should define the music that's in your model <laughs> so that your salespeople don't just turn it on right yeah, because they'll, they'll just turn on their favorite uh, list, which may or may not be appropriate. And definitely, you know, if music is too fast, that's going to make people speed up. They're going to go yeah. through your model center much, much faster. If it's too slow, they're going to get tired. They're not going to feel engaged in it. So it definitely needs to be that right pace that sets the mood, sets the tone, and is background enough that it doesn't, that it's very subliminal. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you're on this call and you're like, oh, why do I need to define these things? I've, I've asked this question um, when I'm sitting across, like I said, presidents, owners, whatever, where I'm, you know, trying to make a push towards why you need to define your colors, your overall experiences. Would you sell one of your homes to your family or your friends? I'm sure I know it happens. Yeah, I know it happens where you know, because you own a company, then someone's going to go, oh, well, I'm going to go buy a house from Taylor's company. Well, how does that make you feel? Like, does that make you like excited because I've defined and I know you're going to have a hundred percent like great experience from A to B because I've defined it. I've trained on it. I've prepared, you know, these great moments or am I, man, I hope it goes well. If you hope it goes well, you have work to do on your brand, right? If I send you to Chick-fil-A, I know exactly the experience that you're going to get because it's all been defined. If you haven't done that as a builder, again, there's work to do. Hope is I not live in the a strategy. South, and and in the South, we have a brand called Publix. Yeah. Now, okay. Florida yep. defines itself around how far you are from a Publix. <laughs> like right. it's Publix is a thing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's more than just a grocery store. And their tagline is... is you know, it, it, it's where shopping is a pleasure. Yeah. They yeah. don't say anything about being the cheapest. They don't say anything about their BOGOs. They don't say anything about anything else. They want you to have a remarkable experience and, and it's a pleasure to shop there. Yeah. So, and, and that is, and, and all of those parts and pieces, I mean, their commercials are, they, especially around the holidays, man, you have a box Kleenex because- you're going to cry at one of their commercials. Like they're going <laughs> to tug at your heartstrings and it, so it's more than food. It's that feeling. And that's what, uh, uh, not as much fun in the season. No, where <laughs> Steve Otto is no going anywhere where you are right now is not fun. Cause it is definitely seasoned down there, Steve. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's about, it's about the experience itself and it's not that product. And that's what people in our business forget uh, so often. And a lot of times I go in and, and I, I'm like, I do a SWAT. The, that's the first thing I do when I start working with a builder. So tell me about who you are and then tell me your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. And we go through and we define those. And uh, we spend a great deal of time and energy to, to craft that, to come up with our game plan of what we're going to work on. And, you know, that's one of the things that I find people struggle the most is, okay, who are you? how, what sets you apart. And then even defining those brand stand, standards, a word I don't like normally, but brand standards to use the, the, the lingo for it, you know, and do you just have your salespeople just sending out whatever and putting cat memes on your, on your uh, e-blast or, right. you know, or are you following that, that, you know, the right colors, the right fonts, the right, like you have to have all of that defined and uh, there's a reason for that because you want to yep. project that feeling. Right. Yeah, it's the right messaging and then it's the right timing too. You know, if your brand is that you're customer service oriented, then, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean you're responding within an hour to an email or does it mean you're taking two weeks? You know, things like that influence brand too. Um, and, and it's interesting. So many surveys were done last year on consumers, you know, shopping for homes and what frustrated them. And so many times it was communication. But communication and brand go hand in hand. So that's something we all really need to focus on this year to make sure we're communicating and that we're leading them through that buyer's journey with the brand and the brand touch points and that it all is cohesive. Yeah, you just you just hit the nail on the head with kind of the next thing I wanted to talk about is like, look, if you haven't defined these things, because you as a marketing team or even as a builder, if you're on the call, you're like, hey, I've been around for anything more than two years and I've been doing fine. 
well, everybody's been doing fine the last couple of years, right? Like yeah. rates have been great. Open a door, say, hey, I build houses and now I can, you know, I can do it. If you're a brand that was around before, you know, and you were really focusing on customer experience, chances are you probably got away from it because it was so hard to do it. You moved, your sales team moved from being salespeople to move to being customer service representatives because they were calling and going, hey, you know, we're, our, your home is behind and because there were, the velocity was there. Well, this is the time to start going back to, hey, you know, we can get materials now. We can we can get back to pay, paying a, a good deal of attention to the customer experience. And so this is the time to do it. A lot of the brands like myself, we've been, we were trying to roll it out during COVID because we know this is going to come. There's going to be a downtime. There's, which we're not in a downtime, but this is just more of a, a normalcy. And this is the time to get back to it. So if you're not already there, don't be, be overwhelmed by it. We're, that's part of what we're going to talk about is just where to start. What are the little things you can do? And it's just like anything, you got to start. If you don't start, you're just going to keep going. So this is the time to define it. And then for that is, you know, what what's your customer looking for? All they want to know is, can you answer three questions? What do you offer? How will it make my life better? And what do I need to, to do to buy it, right? That's what you, everything that you're doing and everything your marketing needs to be able to answer. And then for you, it's like, how do I take it to that next level? What's that second mile that I need to go? Yeah, and, you know, and having once you decide that, then you also have to set your policies, your procedures, and your collateral. Like, everything needs to support that because... It's not just you knowing it in your head. And a lot of times I go in with builders and they're in that place where they just want to grow to that next level. And so it's, I realize I'm at a point where what I have is not working, but how do I expand? How do I go beyond and still keep that integrity of what I've built right now? And that comes down to, you have to establish those brand standards. You have to establish those customer experience touch points and that customer journey. Yeah. What does it look like? And, and then you have to measure it. That's yeah. the part where we can do all that, but if we don't measure it, you cannot expect that it's it's going to succeed. And and you've got to track, you know, anything. Well, if, if you're not measuring and tracking, it won't get better. Yeah. Well, you need to figure out what you're going to measure and track before you start measuring and tracking. <laughs> so that's a cart, horse, horse, cart, you know? Yeah. And it's constant. And, and yeah. sometimes we have to tweak what we're tracking because it's not measuring. It's not getting us the right result. Right. So, so yeah, the, those we call those KPIs, the, the, those key performance indicators and measuring those and, and, and seeing how, checking in with our team each week on their scorecard so that we know exactly what they're doing and what the results of that are. So and I think we forget sometimes to communicate with our teams. Why? Why mm -hmm. are you doing this? Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great point because it's not just our teams, right? Because anytime you're going to do these things and and because you may have owners out there or, or people that are running your businesses that are going, hey, we're doing great. We're making it's, you know, it's profitability play. Why do I need to do this? Why are you asking for either more marketing dollars because you want to create all this right, or more training, whatever it may be? One of those KPIs is your customer uh, customer satisfaction which then turns into referrals or repeat, repeat buyers. So you get so caught up in, you know, like I said, we were talking about postmortem surveys, which they come in after closing when it's too late to, to do anything. And then for us, we go all the way to one year after closing. What do you do with that information? Why is that? If you're asking for it, why is it important? Well, this is where this comes in. You want to make sure that not only is your move-in survey done, you know, great, right at the time of closing and and you got to ask yourself great that's awesome how did we get there is it repeatable and if you haven't defined it and put in these systems and processes then it's not repeat it may be repeatable in that neighborhood because you have a really great team but what's going on in the other the other neighborhoods and then you look at the the uh the surveys for that mid-year and and uh you know one year after closing those are your people that are going to come back around and refer friends you know, that's the whole for every, you know, 10 or one buyer that's happy, they'll tell, you know, 10 people you want to you want to put systems and processes in place so that they're going to tell people and when they come back five, seven years to buy again, 
you want them to buy for you. So that's where all this comes in is like, hey, you, you may not see it. I mean, you're going to see it somewhat soon in the surveys, but you're really going to see this on those repeat buyers. And, you know, maybe I spend less marketing dollars because would you listen more to a billboard or you spend listen more to your friend that just had a great experience? And you have to capitalize on that, too, when you have it. So, uh, you know, if you're not doing those those video testimonials when you have those happy buyers like we need those those video testimonials that talk about how we defined their experience every step of the way how we set those proper expectations for them every step of the way and what the end result was which was that they got to move into the home of their dreams yeah you yeah. know and if you're not doing that you like carol said or like you said you know then they're that they're going to tell people but they're not going to tell it in a way that necessarily is a great reflection on you right yeah. So Taylor, so, ha go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, so, you know, we've talked a lot about some of the things they need to do, but, you know, for anyone who's in our audience wondering, you know, and feeling like, oh, you know, all we really have is hope. I'm hoping they have a good experience. How do they get started? What, what you know, are yeah. kind of the two or three things that you recommend that they start with to, you know, define brand and create a brand? Yeah. So one is define your customer experience. Like, hey, I'm your mom's going to go through this process and you want to make sure it's as great as it can be. Define that. Mm -hmm. So you want to define it and then go, hey, ideally, I would like to create some memorable moments. You know, if we're just talking about customer experience, then we'll go. To, we'll talk about brand overall. Um, but customer experience, we're going to define it and then we're going to put in some memorable moments and things that some highlights. You're going to have a framework. You're going to have you know, an orientation. Are you one make, you know, having some pre-planned experiences? And that doesn't mean like they're, you know, cheesy. It's, hey, these are opportunities we're going to train to so that we can elevate the experience. Like your overall, your buyer is going to go through the same fun house, right? There's going to be ups and downs because it's a man-made product, whether it's a builder or spec, things will happen. The goal of defining your process and showing it to your customer is to go, hey, you're going to go through the fun house, but we're going to show you what's around every corner. So that way we, you know, when it does happen, we set those expectations, number one, so it's not so scary. And then number two, hey, we're going to also as a team plan to elevate the experience on these, in these different areas, right? So, and then going into your overall, you know, brand, that goes back to what's your chicken sandwich? Who do you want to be? Is it just the price? Is it just the, you know, is it the product? If it's the product, awesome, lean into it and put up, put definitions around it that says, this is who we're going to be at brand X. We're always going to have these things, you know, or we're always going to do these things. It's always going to look, smell and feel like these things. That's that brand book that Kim was talking about. They're not just there to put in place and then hand it to marketing and go, go own it. Right. It's for everybody. Kim, you were talking about this too, is everybody needs to know you know, who you are as a brand. So that's where I was going to say earlier is you got to create that compass, right? So for us, it was coming up with, we, we say pillars, right? And so those pillars are not just to put up on a wall and to say every time something comes up, yep, there they are. Everybody needs to know it because we look at our home builders or our basically our sales and construction teams. They're not in the office with us every single day. They're not looking at the brand books like that we look at every single day, but we still have a huge emphasis on customer experience, right? So when they get into the situations with these buyers and they're being the conductor and walking them through the process, if we don't define what that experience should look like and we don't give them a compass to refer to and then ultimately empower them, we're just going off of their best judgment. Hence why. You may have some teams that are killing it because they're really good at creating a great customer experience. And then some that have no clue. So the way we do is we say, hey, here's here's who we are as a brand. Here's who we are as a company. These, these are your pillars. This is what it looks like for operational excellence, second mile service and emotional connection. And here's what that looks like. And if you can operate within that, go do it. And we're gonna back whatever it is that you do. So I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. I've had a construction manager that spent a quite a bit of money and a VPO shows up. So a variance purchase purchase order. And so it's like, Hey, where did, where did this come from? 
And he was able to look back at our pillars and go, I was doing this because it was the right thing to do based on the pillars. So as a company, I've got two options. What the heck? Why did you spend that money? Or awesome. Thank you very much for creating an elevated customer experience, right? But if he, but he had that. He had that compass in the moment. So I don't know if that answers your question. It's just you've got to define it and you've got to live it and walk it out. Otherwise, if you take, the, take your plan and just put it in the drawer, you might as well throw it away. I think you said something really important there. So you got to empower your people too and give them give them a box. Don't just give people a point and say, this is what you do exactly, the, you know, but give them a box so they know that they can ebb and flow within that box before they have to reach out, or go above and beyond. Like people should have, they, they, they should know, you know, what they can own. Because yeah. I think when I said this yesterday to one of my, one of my clients and I said, when everybody owns something, no one owns it. But yeah. when, but when you can define people's area of ownership, they take pride in that. I mean, I really believe that people get up every day and they want to come to work and they want to do a great job. Sometimes they just may not have the right tools or skills or or knowledge set to be able to do that. So let's let's relieve that burden on our salespeople and on, on our people by defining that for them, but give them the box, give them the parameters to ebb and flow a little bit so that they know what they can and can't do before they have to reach out. Yes, 100% agree with that. And, and um, you kind of said it, and Carol, I was thinking about your question. Something I missed is you should have, if you can, either have a small team or have specifically one person that's your brand manager and they champion everything. If you can do it, ideally, if I'm, if I'm talking to a small business, I would say, who's your guy? You know, who's your guy that really gets your brand? Whether it doesn't have to be in marketing. I, I, my whole, most of my career, I've been either in construction or sales, right? Now I'm director of marketing, but I haven't always been there. It's been because I can speak into those different, um, different uh, departments that they've given me that opportunity. So I've been a brand manager twice. And so what the, what that means is, I could go into any department and go, this isn't hitting the brand and this isn't hitting the customer experience that we want to achieve. So really empowering that, that person to go in and go, that's not who we are, helps make, that, that goes to what you were saying, Kim, if, if everybody owns it and no one owns it, having somebody drive that. And I've seen it to where, you know, I handed it off to somebody, that guy did a great job. Then once he was gone, guess what happened? It just it fizzled away because it was like, oh, well, he's not here to hold me accountable to who we are as a brand. If you're the owner, if that's who's on, on this call, awesome. That can absolutely be you. That's just, it's way easier. It's way easier to have somebody do that. And one well, other that's thing, an action item, like define, empower somebody and make that part of their job. Who owns it? Who owns it? So yes, mm -hmm. hey, you're the owner. Then you go out and hey, you're not going to do all this overnight. Like none of this is you do it tomorrow. It's what are some quick wins? What are some quick things that we can do that starts to lead us in the right direction? Then define your overall customer experience and define who you are as a brand. Some of that's going to be sitting down with whoever the leader is and going, mm -hmm. who are you? And if you're in marketing right now or you're really in marketing, and you don't know the answer to that question, you need to go sit down with whoever that is and say, I need to know who we are so that I can go live that out and then empower me to go make that so. Yeah, and that's a whole, like, that's not something you just do on the fly. This is something we are asking you to kind of stop and take a beat and really think this through and, and think about it in terms of telling a story. What's the story that your company tells? And, and not just, it's not a product, like it's a story. It's, it's those memory points. Yeah. So like when I, when I got to this brand, I was like, who, you know, again, who are we? And you quickly say it. So there was no slogan. The slogans, you know what you can, everybody has a, a, an idea of how they feel on them. Are they great or are they cheesy? The slogan's not necessarily always for your in, uh, external customers. They're for your internal customers. So you can say, Hey, this is this is who we are. This is what, what we're about. And here's how to define it. And then we kind of took it and said, okay, elevator speech. Why is that important? Well, one, we want to be able to put that in front of our customers, but also like people want to work at this company. 
So if they want to go out and they're going to say, hey, you're looking for a job. I want you to come be, you feel like you fit the culture and who we are as a brand. I need to be able to tell you what it looks like to work at my company. Hence the same thing with the elevator speech. They should be able to roll that out. Yeah, and it, it comes it comes down to planning. Um, we talked about USPs. So what is your unique selling proposition? What makes you different? What sets you apart? But I think you also need to look at your team too and, and the gifts that each individual on your team brings and and let them let them do them you know they do it but mm -hmm. do it well but oftentimes i don't think we especially sales people i know i work with sales people a lot and they don't often know what why is it great to buy from kimberly mackey what what is kimberly mackey going to give you or yeah so uh i had a, a mentor friend who we all know but you know just keep it to it was a mentor friend who put me through this and then i ended up doing it with my sales team and it's hands down it was the best um that was the best sales rally I ever had. Well, it's really hard to go, Kim, what are the best things about you, right? Because you're forward facing. What we did is as a team, we put everybody, we have a close group too. It's like 20 people. Um, but we had each one turn around and we we're like, okay, everybody in the room is going to say why we want that person on this team. It was super emotional. It was, it was, it was really great. So if, if your team can't define what their unique selling prop, uh, proposition is, have them do it. Have your team do it and go, okay, Kim, turn around. We're going to tell you what makes you awesome. And some of them did, you know, they were surprised. It's like, hey, you're the some of, one of the most heartfelt people I've ever met. And I know you're going to give a great customer experience just because of these attributes. That's powerful. So if you're a sales uh, leader on this, do that routine because you will get a lot. Well, if you're a leader in general, you will get something out of that. I promise you. It, it's an incredible. I, I, as part of uh, the three day training that I do, that's one of the things that we do is you take a piece of paper and put it, tape it on somebody's back and yeah. you anonymously write something about each I person. You go around the room and we actually write on each person's back, something about an attribute, something about, our feet, you know, feeling and the touchy feely. And you're right. It is, it's very emotional. And then we use that to build those unique selling propositions. And it's, it's a very powerful tool. So again, so you, we're talking about defining your brand. You have people that are already in the field selling your product. And if you haven't defined that, they have, because they're doing somehow they're selling. So ask them, but whether it's in your surveys from your customers, or if you're bold enough to bring in the right customers and go, or your realtors, who who are we to you and have those conversations? And but like I said, you can also ask your team in the field because if you're not giving them a story, your really great salespeople are already seeing what makes them so much better than their competition. So mm -hmm. they're the yeah, I mean, all those different audiences matter. So, you know, what what do the co-op agents think of you? What do your own agents think of you? What does your construction yeah. team think? You yeah. know, what what is it that the owners would like for people to see? Um, yeah. Sometimes those are all very different things, which is a little scary and means you've got to work in multiple different areas. That's leadership, but, though, right? Like yeah. the, the first step in leadership is putting your pride aside and going, all right, if, if, am I going to make all these decisions in a bubble or am I going to listen to listen to my team yeah. and I'll say, we look at all of our plans and we go, okay, this plan isn't performing. Well, I get copied. That's it. In some companies, they would send it to me and go, why isn't this house selling? They send it to my team. They're the ones selling it. Ask them. Right. Uh -huh. well, that's all I'm going to do is go, Hey, what, what do you guys want? Every time we've done that and we they've sent feedback on that plan, it turns into one of our top selling plans. That's yeah. again, empowering your people. I have a customer that just surveyed their first, I don't even know if it's 200 or 400 buyers in one of their active adult neighborhoods after they closed, after they've been in their homes for a year and said, hey, what do you like about your house? What do you love about your house? What would you change about your house? So for their newest development that's getting ready to come out of the ground, they made all of those changes. To awesome. have a completely new set of floor plans. Talk about putting your money where your mouth is and listening to your customers. Yep. But 
you know, that's part of brand too. So, you know, you know, your brand could be, you know, we don't make anything, you know, this is, we're, we're selling this and you get this, or maybe your brand is, you know, we're listening, we're changing, we're morphing, we'll move walls, we'll, you know, whatever. Cause we have builders that run the gamut there. And that's, that's something to consider in that as well. Yeah. It's, it, if you get, I mean, I'm sure there are brands out there that, that do it, but you can't be everything to everyone. Well, mm-hmm. well, you can do it. You know, you're, you, some of you guys may be getting by and, and doing okay, but you're probably not doing it as concentrated as well as you can, right? There's, if you guys know Hicks law, right? Too many options that you get the, the confused buyer says no, right? Go to in and out burger, right? We're talking about brains. How many options are there? Three, yeah. what do you want? And they're going to do it really well. I'm a more of a water burger guy, but whatever. Still, in and out is going to do it. In and out is going to do it really well because they've focused in on their product and what mm-hmm. they do well. Yeah. You know, I I kind of uh I want to go to brand and um, kind of communication. If you're not setting up the platform and you're not leaning into that communication, whether it's, you know, hearing from your surveys or on, you know, social media, you're not giving the platforms for your customer to tell you how great you're doing. You're never going to hear from them. Right. So build that into your overall customer experience as well. Like, Hey, this is, your buyers may not take those photos whenever they write a contract or they may not take those photos when they close. You should take them. Mm-hmm. Send it to them because they're going to then put that out there and then give them opportunities where they're, it's like, you know, I don't know, hashtag your, your company name, family. I don't know, something along those lines. Because when you click on that, then they get to see all the other happy homeowners that are there. These things matter and should de- be defined. And that's getting granular, but mm-hmm. oh, you got to start with who are you and who do you want to be? If you can't answer that, you, you, you need to spend time slowing down to speed up. And there's a whole cottage industry in our business that is that's popping up because we do such a poor job communicating to our buyers and sharing right. with our buyers. And all these systems and apps and all these things are being built because we just haven't done a good job of defining it. So there are tools that can help you to define these things. But of course, none of them just happen. They're not just plug them in and they start, right? You still have to get to do the work. You have to know who you are. Or you're just going to be like everybody else. And, right, um, you know, and really defining uh, who that buyer is. Are you a first move up buyer? Are you an entry level buyer? Um, you know, and, and and where where do you fit? Are you Are you that move down or right sizing buyer? Um, which is a ever changing dynamic market right now because move down doesn't necessarily mean smaller square footage or yeah. and it's never meant you know less uh, less amenities in the home. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's dive into what I think is the fun part of brands. You know, kind of those little I call it brand surprises. Maybe those little extra things you can do with brand that somebody might not even notice you're doing them until they notice you're doing them. And I'll just give an example that we use at Denim Marketing. So, you know, we created a fun brand when we rebranded in, I don't know, 2016, 2017 as Denim Marketing. And one of the reasons we did is because we could have so much fun with it and have, you know, words that we thread through our content that are, you know, related to jeans and related to sewing. But one of the things we do that I think people really love is a lot of times on our social media post and maybe even in our email newsletter, you'll see the little jeans emoji pop up. You know, did a marketing little jeans emoji. Just, you know, something a little bit different. Um, Taylor, do you have other things that you see that companies do that are, you know, a little bit of a surprise or something fun and different that we can share with our audience? Yeah, so you're talking about uh, like pre-plan, hey, we're going to do this, right? Yep. It goes to the overall defining defining your customer experience. Um, And I will say kind of take a step back. You need to define these things because it's like it, it's not just an empowering. Um, we do every um, every quarter, we do these kind of internal group meetings where we'll bring in two people from every uh, every department and say, hey, we want to do something like this. Hey, we want to elevate the customer experience. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. 
blank faces. <laughs> there are people that are really good at it and there are people that are not, right? So when I look at like our closing gifts, we would, do, if we were doing closing gifts for a while and we had three options and one was like a technology based, one was like more of a family based with like lawn chairs and, and stuff like that. And then one was a, um, an amount of money so they could go do whatever they want. The percentage of people that would go do whatever they want was very little. And I think what you take away from that is there's people that are really good at doing those pre-planned things. And there's people that are uh, just checking the box. They mm -hmm. want to do it. They like to do it. But so the point is, is okay, give some empowerment to do the things, but also show them what it looks like to go that second mile. Because if you don't define it, it's just, it's never, it's never going to happen. So going back to your question, you know, we have things with like in our plans um, that we put in that we just feel like there's a little, little nuances. And so I won't share too many of those because we feel like there are. They're secret. <laughs> Top secret. Yeah. Hey, but like I said, when you walk through one of our houses, you smell it. It smells a certain way, right? Or you feel it and you don't necessarily get a ton of credit for that. But the reason why, or the reason you're feeling that is because we planned it. We wanted it to, we wanted the layout of the house to feel that way. We wanted the traffic flows in the home to feel really well and or feel really good. And these are the things that that brand manager or that marketing group really focuses on that you may never get an email in your, in your inbox that says, great job. But that's part of what makes you different. Your customer feels it. They may not know exactly what it is. But they, but they feel it. All the more reason why you need to define that for your team. Like we bring in, when we have our designers design our homes, we bring them in with the sales team and we're like, okay, who did you have in mind for this? Mm -hmm. Because then they can describe it to the customer where they're like, you know, this is whatever it's called, forgetting what the term she said the other day, but um, they, they define it in such a way that it feels like it's coming from a designer. And then the buyer is like, oh yeah. I guess I do feel that way. How do you think they describe that to their friends whenever they come over to move into their home? Probably the same way. The we exact did. same yeah. way. Well, you Those know, are the little things. Yeah. Well, and think about it. You go to a restaurant and they're describing their specials. We've all had that server who's like reading it from paper. Well, tonight we have swordfish and, and, and it just, you know, then you've got that server that's like, oh, tonight swordfish is blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it makes a difference. It's that delivery. It's the words, you know, you can use different words to en enhance and, you know, really get people thinking about the, the flavor of that swordfish or whatever it is. The same is true in our business. It's, you know, how you describe it, how you deliver it and everybody right. being on the same page. Right. That's why ChatGPT is doing so great right now, right? Like it's like, I know I like this person, but how do I describe them? It helps It helps you describe them. This, the yeah. little nuances, those little things matter. And that's why, like I said, that brand manager or that marketing person or salesperson that's going to drive this overall, you need to make, make sure you're paying attention to the language, the elevated language that you're mm -hmm. using to define your brand and that it goes all the way down. Because like I said, when that friend comes over to see their new house, if they're using the same verbiage and ter terms that you're oh, using, yeah. it worked, right? I love and that It example. is about, you know, our buyers talk, not only that's what we forget. It's not just about the time that they're with us. They're talking on social media, they're sharing, they're doing all of these things. And if you provide those unexpected experiences for them, and that's predefined, and when they go, they go from one community to another community, because odds are they're going to check out a number of your communities if you have more than one uh, or this home or that home, then they're going to they're going to check that out. Right. Is that experience consistent? Yeah. The first builder that I worked for that I call boot camp for the industry, because I mean, I little man, the stuff I, I owe them such a debt of gratitude because I really I got my formal education. I got my informal education. I got my. Uh, education with, you know, just because um, there was so much happening and we just had to figure it out ourselves. But one of the things that we always did was we had cookies. Mm -hmm. We were known as the builder that always had the Otis Spunkmeyer cookies in our model. Mm -hmm. And we had the little oven and like there was a whole experience about getting people into the kitchen and, and whether they had a cookie or not, it smelled good. There was always that smell and that aroma. 
And there was always that opportunity to slow people down and offer them something. And I'm not saying you need to have cookies in your model, but it's a good idea. But we like them. We do like them. <laughs> yeah, so we don't need them. Smell. It's yeah. the smell. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it all played back to, to that. And, and people started to expect that. So like, it's a, so here's an example of how you can then empower your salesperson. So I took that and I went, great, that's what we do. So on Sunday, I'm going to bring in a crock pot of whatever I was cooking. Mm. And I also brought in, I had a, a bread maker at home and I brought in a uh, dough, bread dough and baked it in the oven because one of our number one objections was, oh, it's a gas oven. It's not going to be as even and I won't be able to bake in it. Well, yeah, and this is a hundred years ago, obviously it's our sad. technology has come, yeah. come far <laughs> since then. Right. So, but back then I was getting people from up North who had old ovens who were coming down and they were saying, Oh, I don't want a gas oven because it's not as, you know, it's going to be spotty and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, would you like a slice of bread? Well, wait, that's real bread. I'm like, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. I just baked it just a few minutes ago. And they're like, I thought I smelled bread when I came in. I'm like, sure, would you like some you know, I've got some fresh honey butter to go right on this. And, and of course they like they, and they would just totally eat it up. But, you know, then I was able to talk about how I baked it in that oven and they're like, Oh, you know, all of these things can show your unique selling propositions, but Sundays were great in my community because all the neighbors would come over because they knew I was cooking <laughs> I sold more homes based on the neighbors just hanging out and people going, this is such a great place. I want to be part of it. Yeah. So maybe I wasn't writing those purchase agreements on Sunday, but I sure had a lot of appointments on Monday and Tuesday uh, <laughs> from fantastic. all the people who came in on the weekend so that we could go ahead and finalize their home selection and 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 go through all their price outs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet there's people on this call that are listening to that. And I'm a high D, high C, a driver analytical, right? And they're like, oh, man. Well, bread, who cares about bread? <laughs> there's a great reason why you're doing that, right? There, One, there's a whole other demographic of people that are like, mm -hmm. yes, I feel it. I feel like I'm living in this home, right? That's that's why we train those high I's and high S's to train us D's and C's and go, this is why you should use those descriptive terms that were those elevated words that we were just talking about, because those things matter, Right. So um, where, you know, kind of to go back, because I know we're getting close to the hour, right? But I just want to go back through, like, where do we, where do you start? You know, so for me, it was make sure you're enhancing the marketing department and sitting down and having these thoughts and trying to go, okay, what, what would it look like at, for our brand? Are our brand guidelines defined, right? Do we have the, the um, autonomy or do we have the empowerment to grow out, go out and create an ele elevated experience. And are we asking our people in, in the field, what would it look like to elevate our, our experience? If you just, hey, all, all governors off, what would it look like? I'm sure there's people on the call that are like, oh, I'm a small builder. Awesome, this is for you. This is the best. If you're smaller and you don't Absolutely. have, you know, these big companies over you, awesome. You, you should go do this. This is what's going to make you unique and sell against those big builders because you do probably that. makes it easier. Yeah, you have that way idea. easier. Like, there's five people to train or ten people to train versus a hundred. That's fantastic. Map your ideal experience to find it. Because chances are you haven't done that. One, you're going to get better efficiencies out of it when you do, and you're going, "Hey, I'm I'm losing ten days here." Those days matter for the the experience. I know we had that at one point from contract to start. We were able to, to shrink that. But what happens? They go through the design center and they make all their selections. They get excited and they wait for the permit. That's when you see the most cancellations is when you're just sitting around waiting for dirt to turn, right? Elevate um, and uh, elevate the language and create some quick wins. It doesn't have to be what we talked about. But it could be just something going in the, you know, in the right direction that hits what you're looking for from your from your team. Train yeah, your and if you can't shorten that process, add a step, add some sort of touch point. Yeah. yeah. So you can add stuff in. Like we get so linear in this and and think, oh, well, we just have to wait on the permits, which we may or may not be able to control. Probably not. Uh, so, you know, then add that touch point. What is that going to be? And how are we going to celebrate right there so that we keep them on that emotional high? A hundred percent. That's a great point. Um, so training, training your team on, again, once you define it, 
I can't tell you how many times I've seen this, like they define it and they're like, oh, this is awesome. It's going to be great. But the field has no idea what you're doing, right? So bring them all in, make them a, make them a part of it, improve your communication. So one of the things I wanted to talk about with that is I had a customer in far, it's Heartland, that it was in uh, far East Dallas. Um, they, they had some, a family member who was going to live in the home, pass away, kind of keep it above, above level. Um, so as a group, that group was empowered to go do something. So they made a plaque, they planted a tree in the yard for that family member that they'll remember forever, right? But no one knew about it. It was a month later when I was talking to the president, hey, did you hear about this team? They did that. No one knew about that, but they created this great overall, you know, uh, opportunity for an experience and not, not ideal, but again, it was elevated and no one knew about it. So share those wins because guess what? That same thing's gonna happen in another community. And when it does, they don't even have to ask. They already know what your your brand stance is to go create that elevated experience because they've heard it, right? And then the last thing, Kim, I know you said it multiple, multiple times is metrics. You can't manage what you can't measure. So if you don't put around, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to improve our customer satisfaction. We want to improve our um, sales. We want to improve our response rates to our surveys. These things all all tied together. I'll get off my soapbox, but I just wanted to sum up everything we just talked about for the last hour. That was a good summary. I like it. Yes. And motivational accountability, because I, I know that when people hear us talking about metrics and measuring and they're like, oh, yeah. You know. yeah. So change, have a little paradigm shift. I'm asking you to have that paradigm shift because it's motivational. When your team knows what's expected of them, mm -hmm. then they will perform better. Yeah. And it's exciting and we get to celebrate those wins that people have. And sometimes those wins are just, you hit your metrics. That's, yeah. that's an exciting, is that part of your culture? And all of this should be, I think really what we're talking about here at the end of the day is culture, right? Mm -hmm. If I can improve my customer satisfaction and my sales by buying the stuff to make bread, what do you think I'm going to buy? The I'll stuff buy to make bread. Need, Kim. You yeah. I'm coming to, I'm coming to Texas and I'm going to have some bread. So even That's though I, right. even though I don't have gluten, I'm going to have bread when I come to, <laughs> so I come out to Texas. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It, it'll be worth it. It'll totally be worth it. So Taylor, wow. Like real world boots on the ground, man. I love this stuff. So I just can't thank you enough. And it's been fun. Thank you. Can't wait to see yeah. what IBS. <laughs> this is a great sneak peek at what you're going to present there. Yeah, when, Wednesday wait. morning at 8.30 Vegas time, right? That is correct. That All is right. Correct. So don't party too hard at the Nationals on Tuesday night because you're going to need to be back at the show at 8.30 to see Taylor uh, and then hang out uh, and spend your lunchtime with us. I think Carol and I are noon uh, or 12.15 or something so, like yeah. that. I think so. Yeah. I think it's noon. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe 12.15. Yeah. Plan accordingly. So. We won't have food, but we'll have lots of nuggets. How about that? So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Lots of bites. All right, everybody, nuggets. take care. Thanks so much. Have a great day and the rest of your week.